everyone, and welcome back to Level 1 Scrubs Podcast. We're joined today by our very special guest, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. You said it's weird that you can hear your voice. I think the last time we had you on, uh, we didn't have headphones. What? No, that was Kevin. We didn't have headphones on. Oh, I'm just going to turn you up because I can't hear you. Feel free to speak right into the microphone. You won't break it. Put it against your lips. There you oh, go. Oh, there we hey, go. So hello. Hi. Hello. How? Hello. So, what, yeah, I guess welcome to the couch. Yes. It's lovely to have you. So, Tracy. Tell us everything about yourself. All your deep, darkest <laughs> secrets. When were you born? What's your address? <laughs> Social insurance number, blood type? Oh, fuck. Oops. <laughs> well, that's five. Why? T-I-L. Oh, really? Wait, really? Yeah. That's a Manga's just got a whole lot deeper for me, oh, yo. So, for example, someone like myself with a positive blood. What does that mean? Damn, we need an expert. Um, <laughs> Where's Edgar when we need him? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so onto the topic of animes and uh, expos and stuff. We've actually brought you on this week to talk about some really awesome things coming up here locally in Winnipeg. Um, if you could explain to them what is coming up here soon and why we should be excited. Woo! To give people, I guess, uh, just th like that, that tease for the uh, main event yeah. or to help them hold them over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how long have you guys been doing Winterfest for? Okay, definitely. So how long, is, uh, how long has the Icon been around for? Oh, wow. That's that's quite some time. It's 15 years this year. I can count, guys. <laughs> oh, are you guys gonna? Okay, so um, onto winter. I just want to talk a little bit about Winterfest here because it's the one that's coming up uh, the soonest. I don't know if that's a word. Um, the, the soonest. The soonest. Okay. Um, so, like, what is Winterfest, and what can like we expect? Because uh, like we've been kind of hinting at it's primarily a uh, more anime convention uh, not your typical like comic con or what is like um, the theme or the centralized idea behind Winterfest Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh. Oh, jeez. Is there any, you know, really interesting panels happening? Oh, you... <laughs> no, no, this don't you no, 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 no. This don't you don't, pander. No, no, I'm just asking if there's something, like, actually legitimately, you know, is there, like, something like, oh, wow, that's something we're checking out. <laughs> I've heard of this from uh, a few friends that have gone, so... No, that's the thing is like I was like I didn't I heard about it last year and I was like what is this and then uh, my dear friend Edgar educated me all about Maid Cafe so. Like, what's the most interesting panel like you've guys had in the past? Like, have you been able to attend any? Like, what was your been your like favorite one that you've actually had? Oh, well, there's been a few. So, <laughs> oh. oh. 
Actors after dark panel stays in the voice actor after dark I, panel. Like, who do you guys get to come down for that, or anyone iconic that you know we could share, or in the past, like? Um, we normally it's whoever we have for our voice actors. So oh. you know, the last year we had we we always have Greg Harris that comes back. Um, two years ago we had Kyle Heber. Last year we had oh god, who did we have last year? Um, names gone. <laughs> Usually big name voice actors and we try and bring in so many different every year. We've had Chris Savitt in the past. He's hilarious. I actually recognize the name of C's. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> you just, why are you looking at me? I'm like, you just like, okay, like, am I supposed like, to? Um, no, just, just trading questions, but that's all. Okay, so like, uh, sorry, I just like tuned out. We were trying to figure out audio issues. Um, so that's Winterfest. Um, you've also talked about Icon a little bit. So like, I'm gonna. I'm kind of curious here. Why do you guys actually split up the events itself? Like, why? Because like Comic Con itself has just only just started splitting up. Um, mm -hmm. Like, why do you guys primarily have this Winterfest versus like just hosting one big event a year? Well, Icon. Oh, sorry, Icon is our big event of the year. Okay. Um, Winterfest was originally conceived um, the year of Icon's tenth anniversary, um, and when it was originally conceived, the idea was we wanted to make the 10th anniversary of Icon really big, really special. So we conceived Winterfest as kind of a fundraiser. Um, so the whole idea was we were running basically a one-day event on as little funds as possible so we can bring in as much as possible so we could put all of that towards the main event. Since then, because our community really liked it, and so we've, we've kind of kept it around and it's kind of evolved into its own beast since then. All right. Um it makes me wonder though. So at the same time, like, wh how many people actually turn out? To, turns uh, turns out to like Winterfest and like turns of numbers. Are we talking like people in the amount of thousands or like what is the amount of like volume you guys actually expect for Winterfest now that you guys have grown to the sheer volume that you have? We have yet to break the thousand person mark. Okay. Um, I know two years ago we did break nine hundred. Okay. Last year we had a hard cap of eight hundred because of our location. Okay. It was just because of our location. We weren't at the convention center last year. We're back there this year, thankfully. Um, we're expecting, we're hoping we hit around that thousand person mark. So. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Okay, so really, really neat. Um, so I'm actually, I'm actually curious about yourself though. Um, so you're really, really tightly involved with the anime community itself. Is like, what got you into like anime or like manga or that kind of stuff? Like. Was it something you grew up with, or is it something that you just kind of like stumbled across onto? Like, what got you into the anime world, or like, what like sparks that love for you? It's just something I kind of picked up. Um, probably, I guess, when I was in middle school, I started watching it on you know YTV and Fox Kids, and you know those those those, those programming runs when they started playing Pokemon and Digimon and yep. uh, Dragon Ball Z <laughs> later on and that type of stuff. And it just kind of grew from there. I have a lot of friends that I I would I would I connected to because of these things, and then we all started going to Icon together, and it just kind of became for me my. My, my weekend away it's my escape so when I go to Icon it's, it's I disconnect from everything else and it's, it's, it's just it's my happy place it's your happy place <laughs> it's my happy place <laughs> Um, I know from previously attending I think it was last year's Winterfest that you guys were at uh, the Viscount no or which one event I can't remember it might have been a separate we were event. at the Viscount you guys year. were at the Viscount yeah. I can't. Well, I, mean, like I know we had a we, mini event there. Yeah, I know we attended something at. It wasn't just us. We were attending an event as well. Yeah, yeah we um, we had a room um, for C4's Anime Wonderland, which that was, was held it. at the Viscount. Yeah, that and was it. AYB that's why. was also there. Yeah. Um, well, that's a little bit awkward, but whatever. <laughs> um, that sorry, I'm like losing my train of thought here because I'm like I'm trying to remember so many things. Succession because um, I know we've attended a uh, Winterfest before. Um, if have we not? I think we have. Baseline, Baseline hasn't attended a Winterfest. Baseline was at Icon this past summer. Okay. Um, you guys had a booth there. Uh, you guys were showing off some VR stuff and just talking about okay. about um, AYB online in general. So. Okay, so we've talked a bit about. One, I'm uh, I'm more curious about like Icon because that's your big event. Like yes. Um, do you guys like who can we? I don't know if you guys know this or not yet, but like. 
um, is there like names or like guests that we can expect in terms of like guest speakers or panels or something coming up to this icon coming up or I don't have any finalized information yet okay. um, at this point in time we are still in the works of talking to a whole variety of, of voice actors and that the only information I have for the main event is the dates and obviously the location so it's happening um, July 15th through 17th at, okay. again at the RPC Convention Center Winnipeg um, it, it, Tickets will probably go on sale. They usually go on sale in April. Um, hopefully, before then, we will have maybe one guest, but I cannot promise anything at this point in time. Are you able to like, maybe give a hint of who it may be? I can't. I can't <laughs> even give a hint because... Oh. because the, I, we don't like to. We don't even like to hint, because while we're still in negotiation with these people, they can say no. They can just pull out. They, at any they, time. they can pull yeah. out at any time. Yeah. So when we start giving hints out into the community, I don't like giving that false hope. And you know, when we say we're working on getting this person, and then it completely it falls happen, then through, it and then yeah, it crushes everybody. So it's just better to wait until we have one hundred percent confirmation. Yeah, exactly. So uh, for maybe someone watching that or listening that might be new to Icon. Uh, what can they expect going on the convention floor? What kind of vendors can they see? Because I'm guessing, do you guys have vendors there as well? Or Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have vendors. Um, we have vendors at both Winterfest and at Icon proper. Um, usually Winterfest, it's local vendors, uh, people from Winnipeg and around Manitoba. Um, names off the top of my head. I know we've got Urban coming. We've got Little Star Gifts coming. Um, I believe... PNP Games is on for Winterfest. Okay. Um, those are typically people we have come to the main event as well. Um, again, those details not going to be finalized until a little later on. Yeah, Our yeah, focus yeah. right now is on, on Winterfest. Winterfest. Yeah. Um, but we've had um, from out of town, we've had a company called Otaku Entertainment. They come from, I believe, Saskatchewan. Um, we've I had a couple of know. we've had a couple of Ontario vendors as well. Oh, wow. So. I'm yeah. really glad that you guys have that much reach. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's exciting to hear. So, um, so the one thing I uh, I've really noticed, especially because I've been driving downtown uh, at, when an icon has been taking place, and it's really funny to watch. Um, not because it's uh, the culture, but um, cosplay seems to be a really really big thing around um, icon. Um, or you, can you speak a little bit to that? Or do you guys hold like a costume contest at all? Oh um, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, we yes. heard that. Oh yes, here. <laughs> the cosplay contest at the main event is our biggest event. It is absolutely huge. How many people do you actually turn out? Averagely turn out? Uh, Cosplays or attenders? <laughs> attenders? Both. Attenders? There's usually. Usually around, there's over a hundred people that enter the contest. Oh, wow. A variety of um, skill levels. So we've got people that just come as walk-ons. They're not really entering the contest, but they want to show off the costume. They They're just proud of their work. Their stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, f to beginners, to intermediate, to experts. We even have some master class people. Oh. Um, I don't, uh, last couple of years, we've even had cosplay guests come to Icon. Last year we had, um, we actually set up the first time we did a pre-judging panel. Um, it made things go a lot smoother and the cosplay guest was on the panel. So it's really nice to have this expert here now. And as far as attendees, oh my goodness, um, we usually have, that room is full. That room, if I remember correctly, fits just under 600 people in that room alone. And we're usually turning people away. Wow. So that's Jeez. something if you want to go to, you line up maybe an hour or two early. It, it's not even so much lining up. We actually, we started a couple years ago with a wristband policy. So if you want to go to the cosplay contest and you want to guarantee a seat in the room, get a wristband in advance. Um, you'll want to line fair. up. You'll want to line up if you want to get a good seat, um, because you know if you show up right when the when the you'll thing be starts, at the back of the, you'll, you'll be, be at the back of the room. That's yeah. definitely something maybe. Yeah. That's why I say yeah. it was kind of funny because I remember I was driving down past the RBC Center here in Winnipeg, and um, for those who live here, you know there's like a subway right across the street, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I remember watching the entire Power Rangers squad walk in, <laughs> and I was like. That's one thing you'll only see once in a lifetime, which is the Power Rangers going to Subway together. So, um, so is there any kind of like social media pages that people can go to to get more information, follow about these events, um, or just you just want to generally blast for the events themselves? Uh, we are basically everywhere. Um, on Facebook, we are just Icon AI dash K O N. Um, Twitter and Instagram, we're Icon Winnipeg without the dash in there. We also have a website www icon ai dash k o n dot org it's dot org dot org it's dot org yeah we're an organization um, those are our big ones 
Yeah. Awesome. We'll make sure to put those in the description below when this goes up on YouTube as well as SoundCloud. Um, so awesome. Just closing, I just I want I want to ask. Uh, so, what's the history behind the name Icon? I'm sorry. What's the history behind the name Icon? Yeah, yes. like so why um, Icon? It's it, that's that's a, that's a little beyond my be, before my time. Okay. Um, but I means love. Oh. And there you go. and the, the convention our our motto is for the love of anime. That's very. That's beautiful. also why, if you I haven't like noticed, it. a lot of their logos have a heart in it. Well, I noticed because I was like, "Oh, that's really cute." You just thought they were that. signing the eye with a heart, yeah, like they're like a twelve-year-old girl in junior high. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yes. Oh, Steve, you so naive. No, that's really cool. So it's like Love Con, which is really neat. So kind of, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's the Love Con, I which really like that. A couple different meetings, but you know what? I'm glad it's turned into what it is. Um, Tracy, it's been so fun to have you on here to talk about Icon as well as Winter... Uh, sorry, Winterfest. Winter. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the Winter Review. I was going to say Winter Wonderland. I was like, that is not a thing, but Winterfest. Um, yes, Winterfest. I know I'm going to try to get it to Winterfest this year because I haven't been to one, obviously, because I kept trying to name events and yes. was yeah. completely wrong. Yeah. It's um, a lot of fun. You should definitely check I've it out. I've heard awesome things. And, so. uh, the Level 1 Scrubs, well, part of the team that are able to make it, we will actually have a panel at Winterfest, so that will be fun. I don't know if I'm going to be there or not yet. <laughs> well, I can tell you right now, we will definitely have one dedicated fan. Um, <laughs> Edgar will be there to cheer us on. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you guys just follow <laughs> the podcast for that one. We'll talk about that here in a bit. We'll but it's been so much pleasure. Day. Thank yeah, you for coming been, on. It's been great being on. Thank you for having me, guys. Uh, we'll be back after another commercial break, guys, uh, again with Kevin from VR. But you all need to work on peeling for me. If you can figure out how, I can carry this team. Well, it's not always going to be about you. Last game, you did lose Lane. So, you know, she was pre-fed and we just got her to, to carry for us. Yeah, but you need to work on getting me fed. That's how we're going to win games when we go pro. We can talk more about strats later. We play pretty good today. Yeah, but you all can play better. Right. Okay, well that's a wrap, guys. Um, we'll get up tomorrow, have some breakfast, and we'll get back at it. I know we're not a real gaming house yet, but I got some couches that you guys can crash on, and I can get some, some sleeping bags set up for you guys. Um, Gary, you want to come help me for a second? Sure, whatever.
Hey guys, welcome yeah. back from the commercial. We are back here with Hello. Kevin here from AYB Online. Hey, hey. Uh, welcome to the show, oh, man. Yeah. You've been on before. I have been on. You have yeah, been on before. You're a demo guy. You're a yeah, demo yeah. guy. So, uh, welcome back to the couch. It's a pleasure to have you. I think last time we had you on, there was no headphones for you. Yeah. So, this so you just had to deal with it. Yeah. I don't remember. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've actually brought you on to talk about some really, really awesome stuff. Um, We're here to talk about VR, guys, and blow your eyeballs yeah, out. I know. Uh, no idea. I know. A couple of weeks ago, me and Steve were talking about some VR stuff, and we just thought. I think we actually said out loud it was like we need Kevin <laughs> like, we need Kevin on here because you are our VR expert and everything so uh, I, honestly I was watching it and I was getting frustrated I was like <laughs> I need to be there right you're now you're like these guys are fucking idiots I was just like but I, yeah. but so oh, our producer yeah, is really telling funny. Kevin not to leave. Pa- apparently, got to sit up. Can you be a guest? Thank you. <laughs> can you be a pro? Um, okay, so let's hop right into it. Um, so the big thing that happened yesterday, we're going to get into this one. Was I know you were just kind of poking at me here, but yeah, it, um, was the Unity 2K Summit or 2016 uh, Summit that just happened yesterday? Yeah, um, some big points came out of this one. I really, if you could like. And I, I don't guess know, do a highlight. So five what? words, break it down for me. <laughs> five five no, I'm just kidding. That's, that's a little bit limited, but <laughs> um, there you have it. I so I just know Unity. I don't understand like the whole okay. VR Unity thing. All right, so Unity is obviously a uh, game and development engine. Uh, so it's for like software too, but um, it's it's a huge VR development platform. Uh, for like Palmer Lucky was on stage talking. And he actually said that uh, like something around 90% of the uh, games built for Gear VR uh, are actually done with Unity. Oh, so like geez. huge, huge amount. So a um, couple of big, big things came out at Unity uh, at the Unity Summit yesterday. Um, so there was that. Uh, um, Palmer Lucky was talking about that, but then. He also said that everybody that buys a Rift uh, will get a four-month trial of Unity Pro. Oh. And I've developed with Unity Pro. There is a difference between the basic and the pro, and the amount yeah. of stuff you get in the pro is worth its subscription alone. It totally is. We it's were so much. About that beforehand anyway, so. Ah, we got props coming in. Oh, where did this come from? <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll get to this in a moment. Oh, but, crap. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... So that was Don't the, notes anyway. The, and, and by the way, this is the Gear VR that we just mentioned. So this is this is what the games are being developed for. Um, so we'll get to that. And talk to talk about that. Yeah, go for it, man. Have some fun. <laughs> put it on the way to have, it's have fun. It's it's it'll fire exactly up. Exactly what I'm gonna do. You guys go ahead. It'll fire up. There's a game on there. There's a trackpad on the right. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna put my head. I'm gonna yeah. put the headphones on so I can yeah. hear you. Guys. You look like Cyclops. All right, cool. <laughs> oh. I made three yes, podcast. Okay, so, so let's yeah. Dive into this. All right, okay, back back to that. So basically, Palmer Lucky said he's gonna give everybody uh, a copy Whoa. of Unity Pro if you buy a a, a a Oculus Rift. Yeah. And the idea behind that is they want everybody to be a creator. Um, they don't just want people to be consumers and take this stuff in. They want your imagination to run wild, and when you have an idea, just build with it. And they say, so they want the tools available for you to do that. Um, they said there was something like 200,000 developer kits that went out, and they're expecting that to be nothing compared to what people are going to buy this year for Rift hardware. So there's going to be hopefully millions of people out there that are going to be able to develop for, for VR. Inspired which is to cool. do something. Exactly. Yeah, like exactly. That's, that's beautiful. So, so in, in keeping with that... Um, Valve basically came on and and it was supposed to be uh, Gabe Newell being on stage but he didn't he didn't show up he did like the whole like sorry guys I can't be there but here's a video of me type thing oh of course and then so he 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 announced a whole bunch of stuff uh, talking about how Unity is now going to be used on uh, you having fun there Sean I may throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. This is really interesting. So, yeah. I'm actually paying attention. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so now the uh, the Vive and Steam VR is going to support Unity uh, uh, like directly. Uh, it's got direct integration into it. So um, that was huge news. And then, and then he's like, now I'm going to do my Oprah moment. Uh, and there's <laughs> there's four, fourteen hundred people. Uh, were there as developers that were registered to be at the conference, and he's like, "Every one of you is getting a Vive." <laughs> Holy shit! Every one of them. So fourteen hundred developers that went to the Unity conference are getting a Vive. The, tr- the crowd erupted. It was awesome. Oh well, yeah. I so think you get a Vive. Everyone gets a Vive. Look under your seats. Yeah. So how do I swipe back on the stream reloader? <laughs> uh, exactly that. Swipe back. There's a D-pad right here. Where? Yeah, right where your fingers are. Just swipe across it, and that I, should go I did. Back. It's not doing shit. Okay, and if you want to actually, if you need to go back in a menu, just yeah. above the D-pad, just above it, there's a little button. That's the back button. Ah, look at this. There you go. <laughs> okay, keep going. All right, okay, cool. Yes. So basically, the point I wanted to get out there is that VR development is being 
pushed hard, right? They want they want VR to be big, they want VR to be accessible, and they want people to be uh, excited about it. So basically, the um, they're giving all the tools to everybody that that that's wanting to get into it and make it easy for everybody to build anything they want in any platform. So that's really great for for. So the obviously, industry. we're seeing some growth in VR without a. D- yeah, 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 things are things are picking up, guys. right? Um, so you know, it's well. I, I remember you were teased me because you went to one of my favorite cities in the world. <laughs> I love Seattle. Yeah, uh, you went there for a very special reason. What was that? I did. Uh, I, I so I work for Tom's Hardware on my day job, and I am the VR editor. That's how I get access to all this. Sounds stuff. like a good problem to have. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's one of the best jobs ever. But um, I got invited to go visit Valve for uh, what they're calling the, what they called the Steam VR Developer Conference or uh, Showcase. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and basically, they invited 24 members of the press and uh, analysts, and uh, they had 12. Um, Experiences there, 12 games that are, are they're practically all uh, indie developed, uh, with the exception of one. Frontier develops, Developments was there with uh, uh, Elite Dangerous. Yeah. Um, but that was the only AAA title there. Everybody else was just indie developers, super low key or whatever. And, sh- and Valve didn't show any of their own stuff. They're just like, yeah, so this is about the developers. We want to showcase some of the best stuff out there for VR right now for Vive. Uh, and for folks that aren't aren't familiar with it, Vive uh, is the VR headset uh, package basically that's coming out from HTC later this year, and it's it's called uh, gives you room scale VR, which allows you to walk around in VR, and it's got wand controllers for hand tracking, and it's just it's just a whole another level of VR, way above what you can get with uh, with the Rift. So. With the hand tracking, with the ability to walk around the room, you get like whole whole new level of what you can do. It's a whole new world altogether. It changes. It, it revolutionizes a revolution product again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, they showed me like a, a twelve different experiences, and um, they arranged in 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 what they were in totally different varied ways. So basically. Uh, one of them was called Tilt Brush. One of my favorite experiences so far I've tried oh in VR. Oh my god, tell me about Tilt Brush. Tilt I brush. know what you're talking about. Oh right dude, Tilt Brush is so incredible. I am yeah, listening honestly, to you even though I'm hunting deer. <laughs> have fun, man. That's what it's all about, right? So basically, Tilt Brush is an art program uh, in virtual reality where you can sculpt, not even sculpt, you can just draw things like stick figure if you want, but it's going to be in 3D space. You can walk around it. You can make it life size. Um, you can you can experience what you're drawing around you and, and kind of live within it. Um, and you can draw anything you want, right? They've got dozens of different brushes to choose from and different environments to draw in. And I honestly think that this is going to be the the like premier title, right? This is going to oh, wow. be the this, this is going to be the thing that people are going to show to their friends, and their friends are going to be inspired by what's possible with VR. It's not a game; it's a totally different experience. But is that going to be on the Vive exclusively, or going to be for all VR? Tilt Brush is for Vive, okay. um, but there is. Uh, the Oculus Rift is going to have something similar. Uh, what's what's it called Me- Medium? I think it's called, yeah. uh, and it's actually sculpting in virtual reality. So same idea, but a little bit different. Um, but honestly, Tilt Brush blew my mind. I had so much fun with it. I can't draw like oh. worth anything, but um, and I even told the guys I was like, I have no artistic talent whatsoever, but I was just having a blast with it. I drew like. You know when you're a kid and they're like, yeah, so draw me a house. And you draw like a square with a rectangle for a door yeah, yeah, and a yeah. couple more squares. I did exactly that. But then I replicated it in a, in a 3D space to make a cube with, of a house. And I was just laughing and the guys, I was painting the walls. And the guys were like, so you know you can paint from the inside too, right? So I ducked in and went underneath my house that's suspended in the air. And the guys doing the demo just started laughing. They're like, you know, you could have walked through that. And my response was <laughs> like, why would I walk through an object, right? Yeah. It's, it's in front of me. Yeah. Why would I walk through that? And they just laughed. They're like, it's it's not. But that's hilarious. So it wow, just, this yeah. is crazy. <laughs> Isn't it? It's I'm so uh, awesome. I'm not a VR guy, but this is impressive. And, you know, that's why I wasn't also want to bring you on because, like, this is something else that's that's why i brought it that was a surprise to for you guys by the way i i didn't warn anybody that i was bringing that along yeah um 
But yeah, so so basically, get along, uh, going along with, uh, with with more of the Steam VR stuff. Um, I also tried a, a game that was actually it was a brand new game. Uh, it was it was announced at this thing. No one had heard of it before. It's called Space Pirate Trainer. I think I've seen this on Steam now. God, it's the most amazing. It's a, it's is, VR specific. Is that the one that's allowing people to shoot themselves? Yeah, there was a dude that shot himself, but there. I think the one you're thinking of is Hover Junkers. That's the one I'm thinking. Yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. So it's same, along the same lines, but the, my oh, my favorite shooter there. We tried three. Um, was definitely the Space Pirate <laughs> one. <laughs> this so game's ridiculous. <laughs> I have, try to keep it down over there, Steve. So, it's okay. So space <laughs> space pirate trainer. You have your your Vive controls. So you got two two wands basically, and they have like tri- like uh, guns, it's and they have a trigger button. So it's just like holding up a, a pistol, right? And so you have these laser pistols, and you have to defend your spaceship. There's these flying space drones coming in at you, and you just have to shoot them out. And, uh, shot, shoot them out of the air. You can switch your pistol out for uh, a rail gun, and you can go like swap behind your back and just. You can reach, actually pull it out. You just reach behind your back, and it actually switches to a shield. And then you just reach back and put your shield back, and you've got your gun. And it's so simplistic, and it's so fast, and it's so easy. But it's it's an intense arcade game. It like gets it, it progresses. There's waves. So we were playing. There was like I said, there was 24 guys there, right? Okay. Um, I was one of the last people to try it in the day, and I got to level 10. Oh wow! And, and the guys were like, "Wow, you're doing awesome!" And I'm jumping around all over. I even backed into the wall. Like I got right into it. Right. Wow. And that's what actually distracted me. I would have made it to 11, but I jumped, backed into the wall, and I'm like, "What just happened?" And then I got shot in the face. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Those anyway, damn walls, man. Anyway, I'm like, so okay. Well, what's what's the top level? What, how how far did anyone get? And like the IGN editor got to level 11, and I was like, "I'm gonna beat him." And I tried, and I got to level 10 three times in a row. And on the third time, I actually stepped on the cable and unplugged it from the computer. Oh no! And I compl- and that was it. I didn't have any more time. They had to that's- restart. It, that, and that was it, but I was so close to getting to eleven. But it was so intense. Like I was actually breaking a sweat after ten minutes of this. Like I was jumping around, and it was a blast. So, a question for you though. So, um, like you said, you would have made it through if it hadn't been for that wall being in your way. Yeah. Um. Wh- so, like for a general user, like what is the size of these rooms that you're in to even use these things? Is this something that, like, say, anyone's gonna be able to use in their living room, or are you gonna have to have like uh, the uh, space uh, to actually do these? Or you have to like rent it out like a social hall? Yeah. No, no. You know what? I'm glad you guys brought that up because that's actually. Actually, one thing that a lot of people don't understand about Vive, um, they hear that there's the room scale and you have to, you got to walk around and yeah. blah blah blah. And while that is true, most of the games are going to be walking around experiences. Uh, the headset doesn't need to be done that way. Okay. So it can be scaled down to a seated position. Uh, it can do standing without walking position. So it depends on what the developer wants to do. Um, you can obviously choose to buy just those games if that's all you have access to. Uh, but then it can scale up to as much as 15 by 15 feet and uh, as low as uh, five by f- uh, five foot by six by five or point five foot. So that's still a lot of space. That's it's a decent amount of space, but think about most people have a living room that has that. If you delete the co- coffee table, yeah, like <laughs> push that, delete. right? No, but like just push yeah, the coffee table over. Out. Well, if you think about right? it, like when the Connect came out, people were like, "Well, we don't have the space," and like Microsoft's like whole thing was like. Just move your coffee table. Yeah, like sure you do. Like it's, it's meant to be moved. Move yeah, your coffee table. That's you don't, you don't need to have it out all day long. You, you move it when you do yoga. Like move it when you use the well, VR that's headset. That's the whole thing. When I got uh, Star Wars Connect, yes, I did. Um, <laughs> my mom's like, you can't move the coffee table, and I was like. Your mom doesn't sound yeah. like that, but okay. Yeah, well, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I I don't have a big house. I'm still gonna have a vibe, and I'm it's gonna be confined confined to that five by six point five foot space. Absolutely, but, yeah. Uh, Why it, I'll make it work, like right? That, so. I'm probably gonna bash into my uh, my um, bookshelf once in a while, just because that kind of like juts into my little space that I have available. Hospital but chips will go through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Book has fallen on you. You yeah. accidentally stubbed your toe. You need to see the news. Man dies from bookshelf falling on while he was in VR. Yeah, there, in you know what? There's, there's going to be some injuries. There's definitely going to be some injuries. Somebody, Will there some, be somebody's going to be. I don't think it's going to get that far. I, well, maybe you fall down the stairs <laughs> Honest, or okay, something. But just sorry to interrupt you. The only way I can see there being a death, and this is like just Darwinism at this point, is if someone is like, I'm going to walk around in the unconfined location wearing my headset, being like walking down the street or yeah. like. Like stupid things. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Like, it, like we were just playing with the Samsung uh, uh, Gear VR here yeah. from Oculus. Yep. And like that one's not confined to cables as we saw. 
Like you can walk around with it. You can literally walk on this street. You you, you could, but I mean, you can't see anything. So why would you? Why would you? Yeah. But to that end, uh, the Vive actually has a provision for that. because it's got a space that you can walk around in and they're taking safety seriously uh, when you first set up the, the, the perimeter for your setup um, it basically determines uh, the, the system knows exactly what your limitations are so okay. you tell it what, where to stop and say okay I can't go further it doesn't just say okay you have a coffee table so you can't go further than that yeah. you have to make that perimeter so you can make it a foot away from each object if you want Yeah. Uh, but once you walk up close to that, that spot uh, a, a grid line comes up in front of you in DR. Okay. So it's That's like, okay, amazing. boom, well, you're you're in this space. Uh, also, there, like, let's say uh, somebody walks in and like says, like, hey, I, I need your attention for like two seconds here. Instead of like taking the whole headset off and, and blah blah blah, mm-hmm. there's a uh, you can hit the button on the controller twice, and uh, it actually brings up. I call it Tron mode. Uh, it's not actually Tron mode. They haven't really call, uh, made a name for it other than the chaperone system, which is also that wall. <laughs> that's um, pretty dope, the chaperone but, system. Yeah, that's what they call it. But uh, when you double tap, yeah. the whole chaperone system basically highlights everything in the room, right? So okay. if you have a chair in the room, let's say you're playing a game that actually like you could be sitting down, but you were just playing a game that you were standing up, right? You don't even have to take the headset off to go sit down. You hit this button twice and it'll give you a highlight of your room. And it's like a, a like a, a blue grid line of everything, every object. You can even read pictures and read... Pi- like so I had cool. a badge when I was trying it out. I had a badge on, uh, with my name on mm-hmm. and I looked down and I could read my name. So you can okay. see pretty good detail. Which leads it. me to the question is how are we scanning these things in? Is the Vive going to come with a, like a high definition camera? There's a camera built into the front face so of the, the front facing of it. So yeah. as you're using it, it's programmatically scanning the exactly. surrounding environment saying, okay, I know this. Yep. That's I know so this. Cool. Yeah. Based and on... It's, it's, so. it's not AR, but technically it could be in some ways. Well, but the experience of, like, say, the chaperone, for example, is AR. Um, it's sort of. But um, the system itself is not AR because you're not augmenting the reality around you. It's just, it's kind of just yeah. doing, yeah, I saw that. Okay. Um, I'm just really intrigued by this question oh. here with Kevin. Um, so it actually scans programmatically as you're going around, so it actually knows in real time. So, like, if something is to move... It can detect, or is that just locked in once it's locked in? So yeah, no, it, it's it's a camera, it's a live camera. So when you hit the button, it's telling you. Like I was, I was looking at my cameraman filming me, and I could see him in front of me and make out where he was. Oh wow! I saw a guy across the room, and he was waving at me, and I was, I saw him wave. So That's so crazy. It's, it's a oh, live camera. I can't wait to okay. experience so, that. Yeah, so it's I'm, really cool. Since we're getting low here on time here, we actually have some questions from the chat that they, they want to ask you. Sure. Yeah. Um, they actually are curious. What was like your favorite console? If like now or growing up or like what is your favorite console ever? What was my favorite console? Because now you're onto this Ooh. VR and it's very apparent okay. that you're into VR. So. Yeah, well, so I'm 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 so into VR. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I, if you're talking about ever, I gotta say N64, man. That that was uh, the most iconic for me. Like that okay. that was awesome. VR Mario Kart. That'd be <laughs> unreal. Well, there there's a game called VR Karts. I've which tried is it. It's really good. Yeah, it's it's kind of like along those same lines, but yeah. yeah. I think you actually at uh, the last tech demo that you did uh, for C4, you had VR Karts working with the steering wheel. Yeah, if yeah. I'm correct, very briefly. You, yeah, very briefly. I would probably yeah. die. Like, the last yeah, two right. one are uh, top two games. Top two games. Oh no, my god! Like ever, and it, it could be VR. It could be um, old school. It could be new school. Oh man! Top two games. Oh, this is like actually. Put me on the I'm spot gonna change here. a question. Yeah. Okay. Top VR game that you're excited for. Yeah. And favorite game non VR. Okay. Okay. Uh, favorite game non VR. Uh, oh, man, I I'd have to think about this, but I. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say just off the top of my head, Bulletstorm. I wish they made a sequel. Oh, I loved what? Bulletstorm so I will much, have to agree and with I, that. I, I'm sh- I'm ashamed that I pirated it because that's the reason they didn't make. You a, can go a back sequel. and buy it. You can, but they're not gonna make a sequel. No, they and won't. That, and it was the reason. It was because jerks like me who didn't want to spend the ten twenty dollars to buy the game in the first place. But it was such a great game. It is a great game. Um, but as I far as it. as far as games coming out for VR, man, all oh, that my my favorite game. I, 
Oh, uh, that's that's also hard. But I'm gonna I gotta say, space power p- trainer man. That's why I brought it up earlier. I, I had so much fun. It's the most basic game. Hate. It's like asteroids in first person. It's it's unbelievable, and I can't wait to play it. And I know we're getting yelled at here to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, gotta um, go. But um, you gotta. I actually something. just want to. Qu- no, we no. didn't ask this one. Is out of all the VR headsets that you've tried, we've talked about the Vive. We've tried the Samsung uh, Gear VR over here. I'm assuming you've tried the Oculus as well. Um, I've tried them all. You've tried them all. What is the one that we should be waiting for? Um, if you're gonna buy one and you really want to buy one, Vive it's like is the, the one, one that you're gonna invest all the amount of money into. Yeah, the, like Vive, Vive is gonna be expensive. We don't know what the price is. I'm gonna guess it's nine ninety nine American. But if you Ooh. can foot that bill, make it happen because it's an experience you'll never, never forget. Um, any one of them is awesome. The PSVR is probably gonna sell the most, but if you can afford it, go with the Vive. It's it's the premium experience. Awesome. And lastly, um, Kevin, you said you did work for Tom's Hardware and that stuff. Is there any kind of social gotcha. media that you want to blast out to follow? Is there like yeah, go um, your articles or yeah, anything? Yeah, like, I mean, check out my articles on tomshardware.com. Uh, I post news and we've got reviews all the time. Uh, the VR reviews are coming like basically right when the hardware comes out. So look for that in like March, April time frame. Um, my, uh, my Twitter is uh, at PumpsyPooy. It's P-U-M-C-Y P-U-H-O-Y uh, and uh, we got at Tom's Hardware is uh, our Tom's Hardware Twitter. And I believe as well you wanted to bring up one last point. Yeah, you bet. Okay, so <laughs> I had to do we, my eye. My we, I, <laughs> yeah, we we I thought we were going to well. run out of time, but yeah, we no, got, we got, we got a bit of a plug here. Uh, I And I, I mentioned it last time, but we're, gonna, we're getting more serious about it. Uh, we're going to be starting up a monthly VR-related podcast, uh, probably like maybe audio, maybe Skype. Not We haven't worked out the details yet. Uh, but we're certainly going to be doing that, and it's going to probably start next month. Sweet. So for all use the for all use uh, for everyone out there that has found some interest in uh, what Kevin's talking about for VR, uh, just check the site regularly for updates on that. So yeah, man. Every week I try to talk about VR almost every week on our site too. Yeah, because you your your columns on Saturdays, correct? Sundays. Yeah. So Sundays, <laughs> <laughs> Sundays. That's what I meant. Sunday, 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 Sunday. Awesome. So we're gonna wrap up here, guys. Just a quick shout out to our sponsors, Reset Interactive Ultra Lounge. Make sure to go follow them on Facebook. They give us a great venue every week. Try the bring poutine. Guys. The poutine. <laughs> oh here yeah. Fantastic. You don't have a poutine named after us, right? They do. Yeah, I do. The yeah. level one scrub. <laughs> the level one scrub. Uh, uh, and shout out to MSI Canada for providing us with a video card and prizing time to time. Absolutely. So, yes. Kevin, man, thank you for coming on. That was awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, guys. Until next time, thank you for tuning in. Make sure to hit that follow button if you haven't already. And until next week, keep burn. Burn.